Hi, I'm going to walk you through my Xmonad configuration. I'm Ethan Schoonover, and I have set up this Xmonad config pretty much the way that I like it. Uh, there's some unique features I thought it might be interesting to other folks. So take a look and uh, shout out with any questions that you might have. So to start off with, I'm just going to generate some new windows. Uh, let's do a terminal. We'll do a browser, maybe another terminal. and one thing that you'll notice right away is I used on the keyboard uh, the tab and the backslash keys as modifiers. So that this I need to just pause for a second and explain. If I were to tap the backslash key, let me make that text really big in that terminal. You can see that as I tap that backslash key, it just generates a backslash. If I hold it down, however, and then let's use H J K and L you'll notice that that was a navigation movement. Again, now we'll do L to go in the other direction. So I'm, I'm moving between existing terminals there. These keys, in this case tab and backslash, function as what I call hybrid modifiers. They function as tab or backslash, but when held down, tab, H, tab, L, they're actually functioning as a super key. Um, to be really precise about it, they are generating a hyper modifier, and I've just associated hyper with the same uh, modifier as super, so that's how uh, Xmonad interprets it. Really, I could be using, this is my super key down here on this keyboard, I could be using that as well, but I just find these to be, these keys down on the very bottom row to be really awkward to hit with my, um, my weakest fingers. And for me, these two keys up here, this is, this is kind of prime real estate. So I'd much rather have the modifiers up here, and I'm really not losing any functionality because you tap it, it generates the normal keystroke, tab, or back tab, ISO left tab. So yeah, that works out real nicely. I really recommend it. The way that I did that was using XKB uh, and a utility called Xcape and systemd user services. It sounds a little complicated. It's actually not too bad. It was hard to figure out. Um, XKB is pretty complicated to figure out the first time you do it. But it's a great system now that I have it working, and I can provide details about that later. So let's uh, look at it again. I've got two terminals up here. I've got a browser. Um, I'm just going to highlight some key points. I can move around real quickly, do do do, like this. I can drag my browser over to the center. Um, we could let's just open up this from the bookmarks bar. It's the only thing I'm going to do with the mouse, hopefully. One of the only things, and then we'll open up some random page here. So I can have, for example, my browser open, I can be reading it, I can move it off to the side, I can come back here, I can, let's make that a little bit bigger, bring up my xmonad config, and uh, start working on that. So pretty easy stuff, pretty common, let's open up another window. Nothing too unusual, one thing to note is that I have gaps on the between the windows, and those gaps... Uh, just seem like just aesthetics. For me, that's really important. It's nice to look at. Um, there's a little bit of transparency. There's a sense of depth. The windows can breathe a little bit. So, you know, just tweaking things like that in your Xmonad config, I think, is somewhat important, often overlooked. I'm going to go navigate around a little bit. You can see that the highlight bar along the top is something that I'm using in lieu of what is normally a full outline all the way around the window. I don't really like the full outline look. Um, I like this sort of highlight bar. This is just a title bar that I've sort of hacked up to display. I'm not showing the text. And let's see. Okay, so that's, um, you know, that's aesthetics, um, some basic navigation stuff. One thing that you'll note is that I'm using the control key, which is, as is very common, I've remapped my caps lock to control here. If I hold down control and then I move my windows around like this, um, it's very easy for me to do, but that is control H J K L, and so the those key shortcut that key combination is not being passed to um, application windows. So, for example, like I'm over here in in Chrome right now, control H is the normal, at least under Linux, that's the normal history shortcut. So, pressing control H is not going to bring up history, obviously. Now, that's not a big problem for me. Hasn't been a big problem. It's probably the most unusual aspect of my own key bindings and I love it. I'm not getting rid of control HJKL for move, window movement at this point, but I do want to note that if I hit a wall, I'm going to have to figure out some sort of sub mapping to pass that 
that shortcut through or I'm going to have to switch away from control H J K L for movement. Um, let's see, what else can I show you here? Uh, we've talked about navigation and movement briefly. I brought up a browser that you could see. Um, we've got a bunch of windows over there. Notice if I bring up another window, this is a three column layout. But one unusual thing about this layout is that if I wish to, if I hold down tab and control together, I've got that browser highlighted. I'm going to move upwards and you'll see what happened there is that it combined those two items, the terminal and the browser into a tabbed grouping. Uh, I could then switch that layout to an accordion group, uh, accordion layout for just that subgroup. And I can switch back to tabs. I can also move that tabbed group around. So now it's over there, still a tabbed group. And I could move it, say, into the center of the screen. Uh, let's jump around a little bit. We'll look at, I've got a work workspace, general workspace. I've obviously named these based on either project or purpose. Uh, communications workspace. Now the next work, workspace I'm going to jump to is my systems workspace. And I've got some content there, I'm, I'm, or some windows. I'm going to delete those, these windows, by pressing tab backspace. Empty workspace now on my systems workspace. I'm going to go back to, say, general. And then we're going to jump back. I'm, by the way, I'm using my um, modifier and then the num number key to do this. And I could more properly press it with my right pinky and then press the number four. I'm going to jump back using my modifier four key here to the systems workspace. And when I do that, it was empty. It'll generate now three new terminals, which is sort of my preferred initial setup for my systems workspace. Uh, that's done using a module from Peter Jones called xmonad.actions.dynamicprojects. I hope I got that name right. And it's great. It's totally awesome. You can set up uh, some default workspaces. You can generate new workspaces on the fly. So I could create one called new. Uh, we'll just give it a generic project directory. This is now a new workspace that I just generated. You can see it up in the status bar. I find it really convenient. Um, and you can have it open up programs automatically when you go to that workspace if it's empty. So for example, I have a demo workspace that I created. We'll go to that now. And when I go here, you can see it just opens up a bunch of demonstration windows to look cool. And also, I mean, just so that you can easily see what I'm moving around, right? So let's move that over there. I can combine those two. We'll do three windows combined there, and then we'll jump around between those different tabs. And if I want to, I can close all the windows on this space. Uh, before I did it one by one, so for instance, I could close one window. I can also hold down Shift and my modifier and do backspace. And it's going to prompt me this time before it kills all the windows on the workspace. So now everything's empty. If I go back to something else in my general workspace, and then I jump back to my, let's bring it up again, demo, it'll open up the windows again for me. So super convenient. I love uh, that module, xmona.actions.dynamicprojects. And let's see, what else do I want to show? Okay, uh, maybe scratch pads. Love scratch pads. So for instance, I could bring up my music, start playing, hide that. And that's, that's a scratch pad, it's a persistent window and it's hidden on a, on a secret workspace, on a hidden workspace. Bring it back, stop the music from playing, hide it again. I could bring up a video, start that playing. What's interesting too is you can of course, and this is common on a lot of different window managers, but I could come back here, I'm looking at that video and I can decide, actually I want it on all workspaces. So I'll press my modifier and the D key and you'll notice that up in the status bar they get a special indicator to tell me that there's a copy of this window now on every workspace. And then I can just tab through all my different uh, workspaces like this. I'm using my modifier backtick. And you can see that's the, oops, I'll go backwards through it now. That's the video in all workspaces. Uh, and then if I want to, I'll stop that, hide that. Oh, here's a really cool thing. This is one of my favorite things. So I'm looking at the browser right now, and you can see that in my browser profiles, I've got like null, personal, alt, personal, alt2. So this is my personal browser. It's got all my personal profiles. If I go over to work, 
And let's get rid of all the windows here and I'll open up a browser and I'll open up a couple of terminals. Notice, uh, you can probably tell just from looking at the theme, the theme's a little different. This is a, a work browser. And what I have done is I've actually created a little script which figures out which workspace I'm on and it launches a different instance of the browser based on that and that instance can have a totally different set of user profiles and that is done using Chrome command line flags. Um, very simple script. This could be done entirely in Xmonad, doesn't need to be done with a script, but it's nice to do it with a script because uh, then I can use it in GNOME or i3 or any other uh, window manager, which I have done in the past. So that's what I call, uh, in general, contextual applications. They are contextual to a workspace. Or if it's a, you know, if I haven't said use a special version of the browser and I open up a browser here on this workspace, it's just going to open up my default personal profile right there or whatever profile I've designated as the default. Um, another nice thing about this is I can say, for instance, that on a per workspace basis, I would like to have a different um, task list come up. And I, for instance, I'm using Trello. I can bring up a task list for, this is like a personal example of a Trello board for me. If I'm over in work and I press the same combination of keys, so let's go to general. I hold down modifier and I press T to bring up my Trello named scratch pad. I go over to my work workspace and I bring up my modifier T, it's a totally different Trello instance. So that's great. Um, it's actually, it doesn't need to be a different instance. It is in this case, it could just be a different URL. Um, one of the things that's nice to do is to create these applications from Chrome and then to use those applications as desktop applications, which are really just URLs without any sort of uh, Chrome, window Chrome, no pun intended. Um, they're just application, you know, they're just um, web views. So you can use those URL, any URL can become a name scratch pad. It's super convenient, totally recommend it. Uh, let's see, what else have I gone through? Oh, I should probably talk about uh, layouts. So my, <laughs> this gets a little um, funny, but in this case, I'm gonna use my backslash here as a modifier, and then I'll use tab as a regular tab key. And when I press that, it's gonna switch to a different layout. And one thing that you'll notice is when I switch to a different layout, the tab group, stays together. And it seems kind of intuitive and obvious that it would do that, but it wasn't super easy to get it to work like that at first. So uh, that's a nice feature. And then if I go to another uh, layout, the next layout that I have in my layout sequence is full tabs along the top. And I can cycle through those tabs very quickly. And that's using modifier, apost or modifier semicolon, modifier apostrophe. Now, one thing to note about this, so I'm gonna switch back to, this is my three column view. If I press a modifier apostrophe here, it's just cycling through the tabs because for me, the key binding is intuitively move through tabs. And then if I were to switch over to my full tab view, again, move through tabs. Those are actually totally different key bindings. Well, I should, um, I mean, totally different actions in X, X monad. Same key binding, totally different actions. Uh, those are that action is dependent upon the layout that is being viewed at the time. So we'll switch back to three column here. And let's see, I've talked about contextual applications and uh, we've cycled through different um, layouts. I think that's really most of the key features. There's one more which is kind of hard to show right now. I'll have to do a separate video of that and that is that this layout dynamically resizes to smaller screens. So if I switch back to my internal laptop display, you'll see a totally different layout. It'll be one one, ma one master window with one column of secondary windows. Um, and that was tricky to figure out. It took me a long time and uh, I should probably do a whole different screencast about that. Anyhow, I hope you found this interesting. Um, I've certainly had a lot of fun getting this configured the way that I like it. Thanks a lot. All right, this is the last thing I wanted to really demonstrate, and I had to kind of switch to an external view here so that we can see it. And that's going to be the fact that this layout is um, a responsive layout, effectively. So it's going to change its some fundamental qualities based on whether or not it's on a wide, ultra wide in this case, or whether or not it's on my internal display. And it does that just by detecting the width of the screen. Um, on Up here on the ultra wide, 
you can see that if I cycle through the layouts right now, it's going to go through um, from three column to this is three column. This is binary space partition. This is tabbed and then back to three column. And this layout that I've thrown together from bits and pieces, I call flex wide three column. This is super creative, I know. Um, this is flex wide BSP for binary space partition. And then this is just called tabs. Now we're going to switch displays. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to switch the layout or anything like that. The layout will detect that it's on a different size screen. So I'll choose from my little D menu, like Rofi launcher here, Rofi, Rofi. We're going to switch to internal and it's going to, you can see now it's completely reconfigured. It's now got just a, what I call flex standard two thirds, a master pane on the left, that's two thirds wide and then a column of whatever on the right. And I could, of course, combine those into a subgroup if I wanted. Uh, this is flex standard one half, which I also sometimes use on small displays. And then, of course, tabs, which is just the same as on the ultra wide. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll make, I don't know, a new terminal window. And then I'll combine a bunch of those into a subgroup. Let's give it one more terminal window. And then we'll switch back to the external display. Well, let me cycle through here and you can just see what happens, of course. That subgroup up there in the upper right stays as a subgroup. And now we're going to run on the external. There it is. And you can see that the subgroup is still there on the upper right. Let's move that around. It'll probably be the easiest way. You can see it right there in the middle. I'll move that back over. So that's it. That's the flex layout that I put together, um, kind of a responsive layout, and it's made a huge difference in just sort of being able to seamlessly move between different size displays.